r slash ask reddit how does someone politely end a conversation with a person who won't stop talking i'm an uber driver i was once summoned to pick up two people for just this reason they had me drive four blocks slash point 25 miles slash 1.5 minutes to another bar just to get out of a conversation with someone minimum fare three dollars and 75 cents and ten dollar tip on the app i would gladly tip ten dollars to get me out of a terrible inescapable conversation just curious did the app add the ten dollars or did they choose to tip that amount the tip is voluntary and user said else it would not be a tip it'd be the price u.s restaurants beg to differ the infuriating suggested tip request I've gone to places that literally add the tip and tell you how much it was. I read one of those mildly interesting newspaper features recently with an etiquette expert, their advice was rather than make an excuse, you should be more direct that you are ending the conversation and say something like I've really enjoyed talking with you, I'm going to circulate around the room now as it's less likely to create an expectation you might come back. It does work too. I'm going to circulate around the room now. Even better if A. You're in a park. B. You're trapped in your cubicle at work. C. You're beginning hospice and the nurse is going over the care plan. One of these is not like the others. Yeah, what's all this flap about having a job? And your own cube to boot. Lucky devil. I don't mean to interrupt but it's got to be done, so just do it. They need a break anyway. This is the right answer. You simply need to interrupt them, apologize for doing so and let them know you need to do something else. Which is still a little awkward, because I don't actually have something else to do. I just want to do nothing without having to listen to them. Just because you don't have other plans for your time, does not mean other people are entitled to have your time. I hate to disturb you, of course, he expressed. He begged for forgiveness and stared at him stressed. I hate to disturb you, he said to him pained. It's just that you won't fucking stop, he explained. Worst case I've ever had, I basically gave every verbal cue I knew of, eventually stood up, then stood in the doorway, then backed out of the doorway. And this dude was still talking. In the end I just said I'll be back and closed the door on him mid-sentence. My dad's like this. When I was a kid slash teenager he'd follow me to every room of the house talking at me. If I went to the bathroom he'd stand outside and continue talking to me through the door. If I had to leave, like to go to school, I would literally leave the house and he'd stand in the doorway and continue talking as I walked down the path and out of sight. He still does this when I go back home to visit. It wouldn't be so bad if he'd actually be willing to have a conversation. But he only talks at you. If you try and say anything, he just talks over you as if you haven't said a thing. I'm annoyed. I really don't understand people who just talk at you. It drives me crazy. I have to return some videotapes. But Blockbuster closed years ago. Continues talking. Oh no. Blockbuster didn't have these videotapes winks. Wait, then how did you get them? Continues talking. Welp. Looks like I'm going back to anger management classes. We have a great line that we use in Ireland. I haven't heard it used abroad but it could well be used all over for all I know. The person is rabbiting on and is showing no sign of stopping. You clearly and firmly say I'll let you go. Then with the confidence of a person doing them a favor you turn on your heel and stride away. This has the effect of making them think you are the one wanting to avoid wasting their time. If they figure it out they can't call you out on it because to do so would be to admit, at least to themselves, that they are wasting your time. In fact most people never allow themselves to think it might be them who is holding you up so they accept the offer of your leaving in order for them to get on with their important work. In general if someone says I'll let you go to me, rare but it has happened, I smile and say bye and end the conversation. 
It is a social convention and I abide by it. They want out. No ego. Let them go and the best of luck to them. People appreciate that I imagine. We have something like that in Germany that translates to I don't want to keep you any longer. Edit, the phrase is ich werde dich nicht langer aufhalten. For everyone who was wondering which phrase I am talking about. The problem with that is nine times out of ten the people talking on and on at you will say, oh I have plenty of time and you're still screwed. A-H-H. In my experience, you have to be firm and walk off. It's all about confidence in the move. I'd Ima head out. Leaves own house. FR though depending on the situation slash relationship it can send a hilariously clear message. I'd Ima head out. But it's your place. Yup. Heads out like a madlid. Mental health worker here. I see patients every day who will talk forever if you don't stop them. You simply have to interrupt and redirect slash or end the conversation. I always politely tell them, let me stop you there or let me jump in there. Sometimes you have to be abrupt or else you will be held hostage by the one-sided conversation. I know it's dubious to ask advice over Reddit but, it is a sign of declining mental health. I know a handful of people who are very far along in life and I could tell them I have to go because my house is burning down and they have to tell me two more stories about how Margaret's house burned down in 65 and she made the best soup and blah blah blah. Edit so, from the comments I've gathered that talking a lot can be a sign of mental illness but it isn't at all an exclusive cause. I'm complaining but I'll let my grandma ramble for an hour before interrupting. She isn't hurting anyone and letting her talk makes her happy. I'm young so I have plenty of time to spend on others. Not always. Those who are manic or who have ADHD can talk excessively, or sometimes it's just an anxious response. Some people just talk a lot. I have a good friend who is very down to earth and, as far as I've always been aware, mentally stable, but the girl can talk. Like my eyes will be glazing over and she will just keep talking. I just think she has so much to say she can't keep it in. Her whole family is the same way. Person with ADHD chiming in here that it is a very real problem for us. Rambling and tangents are almost impossible to avoid in conversation unless you've rehearsed it in your head first. Edit, since this comment has gained a ton of traction, I want to take a moment to give a shout out to r slash ADHD which is an amazingly supportive community. Here is one resource about ADHD symptoms and diagnosis criteria that article does not have an exhaustive list and ADHD manifests in each person different and in different severities. It is highly underdiagnosed in women and especially adult women. If you think you have ADHD but you're not sure, look at diagnosis requirements, Talk to your friends slash relatives about related symptoms, but most importantly, make an appointment with a psychiatrist to get tested because they're the only ones who can say for sure. Edit 2, also someone gave me gold I guess. Cool thanks random stranger. My first gold, laughing face, and the obligatory edit to say thanks. Yup, seconding. If you know a person has ADHD, and they're self-aware enough, you can come right out and tell them to stop taking. I'd rather someone tell me to shut up and walk away still liking me, than let me ramble and, eventually, walk away thinking I'm an ass or a bore. Absolutely. One of my big problems is retelling stories. I have a pretty terrible memory so I won't remember if I tell someone a story. I hate it when people let me finish retelling a story and then let me know I already told them. Like please. Don't let me waste your time with a story you've already heard. Just say something like oh yeah. You told me this. Thing happened right. And my feelings will not be hurt at all. I used to work on a team with a guy who had Aspergers and some related issues processing social cues. He would get started on a subject and just talk at people for 30 minutes plus without pausing for breath. He didn't get the cues that people were losing interest and would continue indefinitely unless you directly interrupted and told him to stop. 
he wouldn't be offended and generally appreciated being told he should have stopped. It was almost a rite of passage in the office to endure an extended one-way lecture about his choice of bathroom tiles or the benefits of all-weather road tires over winter tires etc. I have mild aspirigers and I experience both ends of this, as extroverts tend to adopt me, which I like. The cues are basically another language which we don't pick up as easily as allistic people. I can sometimes spot the micro-expressions but it doesn't mean I know what to do with them, so would rather be told to finish up than know I'm making someone feel bored slash uncomfortable and not know what to do with it. I have a dear, dear, extrovert friend at uni who will talk the hind legs off a donkey. Last time we met I tried to end the conversation with an arm stretch and, I'd better go work on my sketchbook. To which she replied, oh, can I see your sketchbook? There went another half hour. Her son handles situations like this with, I'm not being funny mom, but can you go now? I also have Asperger's and I don't think I could have said it better. Though somehow I've learned how to interpret a lot of those subtle social cues and it has helped in my social life quite a bit but I'm not perfect and never will be. At this point it's not a hindrance to me, it's a unique part of my personality and I wouldn't be who I am without it. So I understand the issues with social cues being difficult to spot, but what about adopting as a truism that if you're talking with someone and they don't say a word in a 2-3 to three minute period, you should probably just pause, ask them if they have anything to say, or ask if they're still interested in the topic slash conversation, and then continue based on their response. If you talk at length and the other person never gets a word in, in almost 100% of cases, the other person is either bored and wants to leave or would like to say something but you're not allowing them to. Yet I use mental timers for everything, eye contact, speaking, responding to messages, you name it. It's close enough to normal that people tell me I am very sociable. But I often lock up in response to mixed cues and have to directly ask what is happening and was getting a little chummy. When people get too chummy with me, I like to call them by the wrong name to let them know I don't really care. Ron Swanson I don't know who this Ron Swanson guy is but I like him. In a non-sexual way of course. You must be his best friend, then. You guys still never talk sometimes. I realize in the past my favorite friends and family members are usually the ones who don't call me and don't want anything. If they do get in touch, it's because they be realized they stumbled onto something they know I'd really be interested in. Non-communicative best friends are the best. You know they have your back even when you haven't paid the social dues others demand in exchange for their trust and friendship. SSSHH Do you hear that? No. One second, and just run off. As a parent, this actually happens. Which one are you? The one with kids. I meant the one going shush or the one being shushed. Yes. Thanks you slash stisk very cool.